Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I want to show you three ways that you can use a de-esser when mixing. We're going to be exploring the many uses of a de-esser today, but before we dive in, if you are ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process in its entirety and really start to hone your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven-step mixing checklist, and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio-ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide, and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and talk about de-essers. So we're going to go over three different ways you can use a de-esser on a couple different instruments. A lot of people, when they think of de-essers, really just think of vocals, right? Because it's in the name, getting rid of the S's or, you know, the sibilance range on vocals. But they can be used in a more wide sense as well to control harshness across a variety of instruments. The first way we're going to look at here, oops, before I accidentally change colors and stuff, is using them to control the cymbal noise on overheads. So cymbals actually ring out pretty much in the sibilance range, up, right up above about three, four, five K. That's where you're getting the bulk of the cymbal noise. Yes, they have some mid-range energy and sometimes some low-end energy to them, right? If you have subsplashes and things like that. But the main area you're getting energy from cymbals is up in the top end. So if our cymbals are too crazy, we can use a de-esser to control them because it's controlling that same kind of sibilance range. So we're gonna look at this section here on the drums. Take a listen here. This is just our drums I'm gonna solo up. Take a listen to our overheads, and then we're gonna dive into using a de-esser to control them. So these aren't too out of control, but uh, the application is, is still the same here. One of the ways that I like to throw in a de-esser, especially on overheads for something like this, is if you have a drummer that's really light on the hi-hat or really light on the ride cymbal, but they really go in when they hit the cymbal on downbeats. You can use the de-esser to hold the cymbals in place a little bit better while bringing up the top end overall so you get more hi-hat and you get more ride. So let's hone in on just our overheads here and we're gonna go through that same kind of bridge or solo section here. This is just our overheads, and I'm gonna pull in a multi-band here, and we're gonna get our DSR going. If we look visually at our EQ here, we can kind of hone in on, on the area where the symbols are living. So let's take a look here. It's above about 3K here. That's where I'm gonna set our DS or our multiband compressor here. Uh, my DS or setting starts at 4K, so let's drop it back here to 3K. Yep, there we go, it took a minute to load in. Um, all we're gonna do here, we're just compressing above 3K. So we're gonna pull our threshold down till we get a little bit of control on this 3K and above area where our symbols are mainly living. I'm gonna hit play here and start to pull down the threshold here till we get some compression going on on the area where our symbols are, are ringing out. That's feeling pretty good. 
Now you have to be careful when you're doing this because you don't want to start uh, etching out the high end that you're getting on your snare or your toms or anything like that because then you're kind of ruining your overhead sound. If you find that you're pulling down this top end, this threshold here on the top end, and it's compressing everything, then you really don't have a cymbal noise. You can pretty much just pull down your overheads overall. One more time here, I'm gonna go too far. I want you to hear what it sounds like if we go too far on the cymbals. We start to get some distortion, some clipping going on because it's pushing so hard into the threshold here on the top end of the multiband with our cymbals. And you can see we're compressing everything, not just the cymbal noise here. So let me set it back where we want it here and we'll listen one more time. That's really all we need. We're doing about three dB reduction there when our cymbals get a little bit too crazy. Throw it back in our drum mix here and listen one more time. Like I said previously, what this allows is it allows you to pull your overheads up higher because we're controlling the cymbal noise so we can set the cymbals where we want them and get some more of the kit noise overall as well as some more hi-hat and ride cymbal. Now the next way you can use a de inside of the mix, which I'm actually using on this track, is on guitars. So if we pull up here, you can see I have that same de setting pulled up on the electric guitar bus. So this was a live tracked project. And sometimes with live tracked guitars, you know, you're tracking a whole band, you don't take the time to check what your guitars are sounding like as you're tracking a bunch of songs. And things can get uh, crazy on the top end of your guitars, they can get harsh, and maybe you didn't catch it while you were tracking. That is a nice way where you can pull in a de -er after the fact, inside your mix section, maybe they were a little bit too harsh, that's where your de -er comes in to save the day. So take a listen to these two guitars here. I'm gonna turn off the reverb. Just in this ending section here, going into our final chorus, and listen without, and then I'll kick our de -er in here. You can hear that guitar on the left gets gets somewhat pokey when he hits some of those strings. That's not what we want. But what the de -er allows here is it allows us to take care of just that pokiness while still being able to boost up this range here. We want some of this four or five K area to get that brightness and that crispiness on the guitar. It helps bring out that crunch sound but we wanna be able to control it as well. So pulling in a de -er or a multiband like this on guitars that can get harsh is a nice way to get that top end, but keep it controlled. So listen one more time with and without the multiband or a de -er here on the guitars. <laughs> Now, if you're using an older version of Studio One or if you're using a DAW that doesn't come stock with a de -er, then you can pull these same multiband settings like I'm using here. So we're just compressing 2K and above here. We're just doing 3K and above on the overheads. Ratio is all the way up at 20 to one. So we're using it like a limiter. Fastest attack, fastest release, and 100% mix here. Just pulling the threshold down till we're getting the amount of reduction we want on this range. On the overheads, about 3 dB reduction, same thing here, just pulling back 
when we get those kind of those pops or those string noise that jump out a little bit too much here on our guitars. That's the second way. So first way we can use it on overheads to control cymbal noise. We can use a de-esser on guitars to control the harshness there. And the final way is probably the most obvious way, right, is using it on vocals to control the S's. So let's briefly look at this here and then give you a little bonus here. So we're looking at our lead vocal here. Take a listen, you can see what our de is doing. Stay in time, don't get out of line. Oh boy, stay in time, don't get out of line. Oh boy, stay in time, don't get out of line. Oh boy, stay in time, don't get out of line. Oh boy, stay in time, don't get out of line. Oh boy. Really doing a lot of work here on the vocal with the de-esser because like I said, it was a live tracked project. So you can hear all the bleed in the background as well. And with a dynamic microphone, boosting up the top end to get the to get that brightness and the air that you want, you will inevitably get a lot of S or sibilance range as well. So we're using this de-esser or multiband to control and combat that that we're getting from a dynamic microphone. But that's the obvious way you can use a de-esser, right? Is controlling the S or the sibilance range on a vocal. We're not here for obvious today. The bonus way here, or the other way you can use it, is actually on the effects for vocals. So if we come over here to our reverb that our vocal's sending to, take a listen to this. Stay in time, don't get out of line. Oh boy, stay in time, don't get out of line. Oh boy, stay in time. Maybe we wanna pull up our reverb a little bit farther, but we don't want all that S or sibilance range in there. So what we can do, what I like to do is usually copy it over from the vocal, but we're doing a little bit heavy work there on our vocal. So I'm gonna pull in a new multiband here, pull up my de or setting, same settings here, right? 20 to one. And we're gonna start that just that 4K and above area, pull it down so we're taking care of that sibilance range. Now we have an extra level of control on our vocal. We're doing some de directly on the vocal, taking care of the sibilance range coming right off the microphone. And then we have another level of control on the sibilance range coming from the reverb. So our vocal sending into the reverb, hitting our reverb, hitting our EQ, and then on the end of the chain, we're using this de to make sure our reverb isn't exaggerating the sibilance range any further going on top of the vocal. So those are three ways, technically four ways, that you can use a de inside the mix. And the way we use it on guitars, you can use that across the board, right? If you have strings or piano that maybe jump out a little bit too much, they get too harsh for you inside the mix, you can use the de to also save the day there. So we're using it on overheads to control the cymbal noise, we're using it on guitars here to control the harshness up on the top end, that three, 4K area, using it on vocals, both directly on the vocal and on the reverb to control the sibilance range. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank <music> you.